All right, I'm going to show you how to uh, create code to run the NeuroMaker um, from shapes and text and anything you can do in Inkscape. Um, you can send to the NeuroMaker uh, to cut into wood. So um, I guess I'll do something really simple in Inkscape. I'll just um, create a new Inkscape and type out my name in text. Uh, one important step here is that everything that you're going to send to the um, NeuroMaker has to be in path. So right now this is a text object. We're going to go to object, uh, I'm sorry, path, object to path, and that will convert this to a path. And now that it's a path, we can export it. Um, we want to make sure this is the size we want it in inches. Um, seven by, oh, I think we're gonna rotate it for convenience later. We'll just have it like that. Okay, so um, if I remember right, everything is relative to the bottom left corner. So that's gonna be our origin. The, the NeuroMaker is gonna move from here. So position everything you want close to the origin in the bottom left corner. Okay, we can save it just as a standard SVG. Put it on my desktop. So the software we're going to use to convert to the uh, machine code is called MakerCam, and um, it's accessible via the internet. You can just go to MakerCam.com, but in the case that that website is down, which sometimes it is, I've also saved, it's just a, it's a Flash application, so we have a locally saved version of the Flash application. looks exactly the same. So um, first thing, when you're importing from Inkscape, you want to change one of the settings. We've got to go to Edit Preferences and change the Import Resolution. So from Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, it's fine. You don't have to change this number. But since we're importing from Inkscape, we need to change this to 90 pixels per inch. So that's just so that our um, dimensions match up. So hit OK. And now we can import our SVG, Open SVG. Navigate to wherever we saved that, Colton Jackson, not SVG. Okay. So that imported the path. OK, I'm just scrolling out and in. Um, and our uh, background here is in inches. You can change this grid from centimeters to inches. And uh, that's just a path right now. So to tell the machine where to go, we have a few different options up here in the cam menu. Um, so a pocket operation will have the drill go back and forth inside of the letters. A profile operation will have it, the drill go on the outside or inside of these shapes. Uh, but a lot of the time I find myself just using the follow path operation. And that'll take the drill along the exact line. OK, so when you use, pick one of those operations, it brings up um, a few parameters we have to fill in. Um, I think typically we're going to be using an eighth inch drill bit. We have a few different drill bits to pick from. I find the eighth inch drill bit to be kind of versatile, so we'll stick with that for this tutorial. Um, so an eighth inch in decimal form, 0.125 inches. So that's the tool diameter, is the, the diameter of your drill bit. Then we have target depth, which is how deep we want to go down. Um, and I'm just going to pick a really small amount. Well, yeah, like 067, that's a sixteenth of an inch. Um, safety height is the height that the whole router moves in between um, cuts, so it raises up half an inch uh, between cuts. That's pretty good if you've got a drill bit, um, but it also wastes a little bit of time going up and down. I usually mark it down to maybe 0.2 inches. Um, that's the height. It comes up off the surface when it's moving from one cut to another. Um, stock surface we're going to leave at zero. It just kind of means the, the starting point that we use. We're going to, uh, I'll show you later, we're going to position the drill on the, the very surface of our material so that we're going to keep that at zero. Step down is a measurement of, it takes this target depth and it decides, you know, if you're going to do a half inch deep cut, you don't want to cut it all at once. You'll, you'll uh, snap your drill bit. So you want to decide how much to step down at a time, and it's kind of how deep can you cut at, at a time, and that's related to your tool diameter. So typically, it's kind of a rule of thumb I've been told, I need to do some more research, but um, if you've got an eighth of an inch tool, you don't want to drill any deeper than half of that. So we don't want to drill 
any deeper than a sixteenth of an inch at a time. Um, so if you're doing a really shallow cut though, so if I'm doing a sixteenth of an inch cut, and I can use a sixteenth of an inch step down, and it'll just do that one cut. Okay, feed rate and plunge rate. Um, typically, I leave at the default values. There's a lot of material out there that'll tell you how to um, calculate ideal feed rates and, uh, and all that. Plunge rate is just how quickly it moves down. Um, but those are both good numbers to start with. So we hit OK, and it decides well, highlights all of our moves. Um, the next step is to calculate them. So that's just selects this operation, but then we can calculate it. And now you see all these arrows pop up. And so that is the direction it tells um, the router to move. So now that it's got the path built out, we can export the G code. So standard G code, we only have one path um, with more complicated shapes. You might have tool changes and stuff in here. But um, for one path, you have just one tool path to export. So we click export. We decide what to name it. I'll just say tutorial. And it's going to give it a .nc uh, file extension. We are going to save it on the network. Well, go to our desktop, go to FAQ. So we can access it from the machine plugged into the router. And I'll put it in my folder. Okay. So I'll take another video over at the machine.